Hello and welcome to another Leica review. Today we are going to be talking about Leica's latest announcement which is the reduction of price for the Leica SL camera. Leica SL camera had originally come out as a professional camera, a full frame camera that was meant to compete with uh, lineups from Canon and Nikon and apparently the competition had been quite fierce. The question had always been would the camera be successful in the professional world? Well, there are certain issues with this camera that we will we had discussed in our previous uh, reviews but this one is particularly important because now the price of the camera which is now across the six thousand dollars is a camera that is in line with the other cameras that are produced from canon and nikon and they are both ranging around the six thousand dollar level so does it make it worthwhile to invest in this camera and have it part of your uh, professional equipment now the question has always been what are the specs and what does it deliver in comparison to the other cameras in the market first of all one of the major differences is that Leica SL is a mirrorless camera whilst Canon and Nikon has been producing DSLR type of cameras and DSLR type of camera has been in the market and has been used by professionals extensively for many, many, many reasons and for many, many years, because of affordability and lens selection reasons, cameras from Canon and Nikon have been ruling the market. What has changed, though, is the introduction of Sony's A9, which uh, succeeded all the other cameras that are in the market as far as mirrorless cameras. If you talk, talk about the Sony's A7 series, which has been highly successful, both in terms of delivering quality and performance and this new camera which is supposed to compete with the Leica's other camera which is the Leica SL now we're going to see a head-to-head -head competition now I did a review that you can see the review on our uh, Leica review YouTube channel you'll see that there are significant performance improvements that Sony A9 brought especially in terms of number of frames that are going to be delivered from the camera also the number of face detection systems that are in the camera these are all very important factors that determine whether you should buy the camera or not of course there's always the price issue and Sony has been the leader in that market department because they have delivered a camera that is far cheaper than both Nikon, Canon and Leica of course we like Leica cameras because they deliver performance in terms of optics and quality and if you look at the specs of the Leica SL it has 24 megapixels it has 11 frames per second there of course the number of face detections is quite low but still it is competitive in certain respects now is it worth investing six thousand dollars well the question becomes is Leica preparing to announce a new camera the Leica SL Mark II perhaps and that is a question that has been on the minds of many people, especially all, uh, people who have purchased this camera prior to uh, these announcements that were made by Sony. And now the question is, is it worth investing? And I think that because the Leica SL has been in the market for quite some time, like the Leica Q, there is going to be an announcement. But it's not going to be an announcement anytime soon. I'm expecting the announcement to come in the fall, somewhere between three to four months from now and that means that the market is going to be there for the Leica SL cameras even after the announcement of course we are gonna have a price drop probably it's gonna sell to about $4,500 which is a very competitive price range for the Leica SL so you might be losing what $1,500 as an investment but as a as a general investment in terms of buying this camera using it for long term it is still a valid option now the quality issues as they had with canons and like nikons is not evident in the like sl like sl has been deliver delivering performance in a lot of areas including the 4k capabilities which is dci a lot of cameras uh, provide uhd type of uh, 4k which is 3800 level and the other one is 4096 which is a lot higher and it's the what the cinema standard is of course there is a uh, pixel banding and there is more there's a lot of other issues that happens when you're doing DSLR type of filming but still the 4k capabilities is an important step in the right direction the question becomes is if you are to buy this camera 
at six thousand dollars is it going to be valuable now the question has always been and the, if you ask any profession is it's a system you're buying into a system if you are a canon user you have bought the canon lenses and you probably cannot switch to another system except maybe a sony system because the nikon cameras for example cannot accept the canon lenses on the other side, Nikon ca lenses can be uh, used on Canon cameras, but they lose a lot of the functions like autofocus and everything else. So when you bought into a system, you had to stay within that system. Now, the good thing about buying a mirrorless camera like the full frame cameras, like like a SL, that you are able to adapt some of these lenses onto your camera and have the autofocus function work. Yet again, for those who are willing to purchase this camera, they have to make an investment in buying like a lenses, especially like a SL lenses. And when you look at the lineup of lenses that are available from Leica SL, it is very limited. And in that respect, I think Leica is far behind in delivering the needs of professionals in the short term. Now, it should have happened that they should have had close focused lenses, they should have had an uh, over 15, 20 different types of lenses that are available as Leica SL lenses. I'm not talking about the Leica M lenses. Of course you can adapt Leica M or Leica S, S type of lenses. And I have the Leica S lenses that I put on my Leica SL. But the question is always, what are you getting out of it? You cannot use a Leica M lens efficiently if you're doing professional photography. For example, if you go out uh, doing sports photography or wildlife photography, you don't have the time to do manual focus in 90% of the times. That is why the autofocus system is so efficient and that's why it is being used by Canon and Nikon. So what the question becomes is how fast is your autofocus and do you deliver autofocus in your camera? And when you look at like like a SL, for example, you put a like a S lens, you are going to get the, the crop factor and you're not going to have the ability to use the lens as it should have been because it's designed for the Leica S series, yet the optics on the Leica S is incredible. So that leaves only a small margin of lenses that are available. Now, if you look at their lens that they brought out, you notice that it's not a F, constant f2.8. It is uh, it's a variable lens. So that means that the lens is not up to the limitations that the other companies are producing. 24 to 70 is a stable lens that has been in the market for years and years for, for all the camera manufacturers. And when you look at the camera manufacturers, they're providing uh, uh, optical stabilization, in-body stabilization, which are often not available in a lot of other cameras. And also you look at the quality improvements year after year. So that is a long line going. So when you look at like SL, it is a newborn baby comparably. And when you look at what has been being produced for, for example, the Canon series or the Nikon series, you find that camera companies are in collaboration with other, other lens manufacturers like the Sigma and Zeiss producing high quality optics. So there are many, many options for, for example, a Canon user. They can put Sigma lenses, they can put Canon lenses, they can use other types of lenses from other manufacturers. Now, whether you like to use a Tamron or a Sigma is immaterial. What is important is if you are like a buyer and you want to stick with the Leica lenses, you want to buy uh, native lenses and native lenses is the key issue. So what we look at is have they delivered on the number of lenses that are available and this the ecos ecosystem that is to be supported. And I feel that there has there is a lot of room for improving that and uh, time limitations that has been placed on professionals looking to buy more and land more lenses for their Leica SL has not been delivered. So, you know, two, three years down the line from now, we want to have all these lenses, but I don't see Leica announcing and saying, well, you know what, I'm going to be delivering 24 to 70, 70 to 200, and I'm also going to deliver all these other variety of lenses for your professional needs. Maybe you need to deliver three, 300 millimeter lens, a 500 millimeter lens for the professional who wants to use it for wildlife photography. So these are very, very important factors. And if they want to be in the market for competitive reasons, they have to deliver it. Now, I personally feel that Leica S, uh, Leica SL are great cameras. They're, they're great cameras for, they provide quality and they provide the, uh, the quality that has been expected of Leica. Now, 
as far as technological improvements, especially low light performance and everything else, we're seeing Sony providing a lot more uh, competition. And we look at the Leica SL, it's got 50,000 ISO, which is not all that much. We never use those numbers. But what we is important is how does it perform at 6400 or 3200? And we're seeing that the technology has moved in that direction and the Canon and Nikon are producing quality images from 6400. Now I can say that the Leica SL has got good image quality up to 3200, but when you go up to above that number, it's going to deteriorate quite rapidly. And this is where one area that Sony A9 has been doing well. So if I were to purchase a camera for what it is, uh, Sony A9 is the best deal out in the market right now. Like Leica SL can be a great deal if it is available for purchase, for example, from uh, a reputable seller and you can probably buy it on eBay and other uh, area places where they sell it at a discount. Maybe they are slightly used or they are in new condition or they are floor model. So you are able to get the lens, for example, uh, at a reasonable discount and then you're going to get the camera at a reasonable discount. It makes sense. But if you look at the overall picture, you are buying a camera that's $6,000, but the lenses are equally as expensive. In, they are far more expensive than what the Canon and Nikon lenses are. And that is one of the deterrents for professionals because professionals look at it this way. They buy the lens, they buy the camera, they make the investment, and they want to make money out of it. They want to be able to make a return out of it so that they can invest in the next technology. So here we are, we're buying like a SL that's two, three years old, and that was costing, what, $8,000. And now we're looking at a camera that's costing $6,000. And what we're seeing is this camera and lens combination is costing us, what, fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. Are you going to be able to deliver that uh, return on your investment? Considering that your competitor is going to be Canon and Nikon users. And can you tell the difference between a Canon and Nikon camera results versus Leica. Only very few clients will ever notice and professionals will have be hard pressed to notice the differences because what happens is now because we have digital technology, we can take the images, export it to Lightroom and see how we can perform different changes in terms of uh, saturation, contrast and other elements that we can adjust the image. So this is very, very important. Now, personally, as I, again, I will come to this, I love Leica lenses, I love Leica cameras, and I love Leica SL. And what I would do is, is I would use those, but in a limited frame of use. I know the, the limitations, and it's not going to give me the high performance that I'm looking for if I'm shooting at f4, because I'm going to need to use f2.8. So if the 7200 is not there, or the 24 to 70 is not there, to deliver that performance, then I'm stuck. Again, we're going to come back to using an 85mm or 75mm or 50mm as a prime lens. But those prime lenses are mostly for photography uses in studio and other things. And you would be hard pressed to find a wedding photographer or an action photographer using a lens that is just prime lens. They usually use a zoom lens. If you go ever seen uh, paparazzi, they use these long lenses that have a lot of uh, change in, in focal length because you may not know when the, the, the subject is going to be in a certain location. So you may not be able to move in and out from your location when you're photographing. So it is important to have the zoom lenses. As far as Leica is concerned, Leica has a dominance in one market area, which is the Leica M, uh, which is the rangefinder cameras. And that is their bread and butter. They have made a you know, considerable investment in making Sumerit type of lenses to make their profitability good. Uh, they have had the, the Leica M10 come out, which sells practically the same price as the M240. And I'm seeing uh, that a lot of people just looking for options. And options is, is, is getting tighter and tighter because what we are having is Fuji pushing on one side, on the, on the one side of that kind of mirrorless cameras. We have Sony pushing in one, the other side. They're providing a lot of quality. And it's like a SL, which is a really good full-frame camera, but does not have the ecology that is needed to support the system. So Leica is going to have a little bit of a hard time 
providing what the professionals need. Now, I use the Leica S, uh, which is a medium format camera, and I briefly mentioned that it's getting a lot of competition too. Uh, Fuji is getting coming out with the GFX 50, which is selling what uh, uh, this price of a uh, of a Leica M10. So it's fairly cheap. Now, do I want to spend eighteen thousand dollars to buy? Uh, like a S body well that's an investment decision you need to make and if it delivers the performance and you're looking to use it for that long fair enough but you can buy three uh, like uh, Fuji GFX 50 for the price of a uh, like a S body so this is what I'm talking about I'm talking about the fact that the pricing has to be there the ecology has to be there and the quality has to be there so I hope this has been an informative review I hope I have touched upon something important I'm going to ask you to kindly, if you like this review, review to put a like button uh, and also put a, a subscribe to this channel so we can deliver more information, more reviews to you about Leica cameras and lenses. And I thank you for watching.